These two cowbirds have been on our porch for a couple of days now. Kathy's named them Ike and Tina because they're like the singers. They enjoy performing from their little stage and seem to have a rather turbulent relationship. After a full morning, we finally came up with a working theory on Ike and Tina. They seem to see Ike's reflection as another male, and Ike sees the reflection as a competitor for his honey's affection. And so he is continually puffing himself up, showing who's really got the right stuff. Now, unfortunately, his competitor is proving to be his equal. So Tina flies from Ike to the reflection, equally attracted to both of these potentially hunky partners. What's a girl to do? It's pretty funny, really. One's fending off an imaginary enemy and the other's drawn to an imaginary romance. It's funny, but you know, it's also disturbing. They show up at the first light, hang around all day, and don't leave until dark. And they've been doing it for days now. What they are imagining is consuming their little cowbird lives. It's disturbing because we are not much different. Our imaginations can take over our relationships just as easily. We imagine people hurting us on purpose or those closest to us betraying us, thinking less of us and even abandoning us. And before we know it, we are consumed by our imagination in the glass. Imagination is a good thing in its place. But in our relationships, when it runs wild, when it becomes a substitute for actual truth, it can cause a lot of suffering and wasted time. It's a disturbing truth. It is far too easy for anyone, any relationship, to become Ike and Tina. Sometimes what we allow ourselves to think is, well, for the birds. created in the image of God. And one of God's characteristics is that he is creative. And creativity takes imagination. We are creative and we have imagination. Even if you don't see yourself as a particularly creative person, you are in, in the grand scheme of things and you do have an imagination. And that's great. Imagination is a wonderful thing. Except in our fallen state, another theological statement, we're still made in the image of God, but we're kind of twisted. That's why we come in this world. That's what sin does. That means all the things that are a good capacity can also be a bad capacity. And imagination is one of those things that can be that way. We can imagine wonderful things, and we can imagine hideous things. And we can imagine things that aren't real, and we can imagine things and make them reality. There's a number of things we can do. The imagination can go in a good direction and the imagination can go in a bad direction. And the imagination has a lot to do with every relationship that we have. Jeremy, uh, Jeremiah 7. I guess if you're familiar with the book, maybe you say Jeremy. I don't know. <laughs> Jeremiah 7, 23 uh, hits at this. And the prophet is saying this of God's people. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that, I may be, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart. And went backward and not forward. Same thing with us in relationships. Our imaginations can propel us towards God or away from God. And in relationships, that means they can propel you towards God's design and how He wants you to be in relationships 
or propel you away from the design, depending which way your imagination is going. Imagination is something that has a big effect. Well, we talked about we're twisted a little bit, and, and then just starting from there, then what are the negative forms that we have to watch out for? Dealing with the imagination in relationships, kind of like uh, the birds we were watching there. Well, if we were to go out and, and, and poll a whole bunch of uh, Christian counselors uh, on, on what they see when people come in looking for help, they can give us, and they do give lists of these are the things that people are struggling with the most. And, and along that list, there's a whole bunch that fit into this imagination category. <clears throat> and on the top of that list, and the one thing we'll spend the most time on is this. In the negative form of imagination, the one thing can be affected is expectation. Expectation. And it plays a lot. Expectation is our starting point in any relationship. And if we're talking something like marriage, it's really a big deal. Expectation in the relationships, expectations in the interaction, sets up how you will respond, your attitude, the nature it will take. Just on a personal note, <clears throat> to give an example of expectation, um, I think uh, uh, many folks in here know, last week, uh, Steve preached, I went off to see my mom because she was not doing very well. In fact, she was doing very poorly. I had expectations when I left here, you know, what you know, what might be the case. Well, when I got there, the antibiotics had kicked in, and, and then, uh, if you can imagine anybody being excited to see me, that was the case. And so she perked up, and, and she was better than I expected. And that affected the whole nature of, of the whole visit. Now, expectation is not to say she was completely restored to health, She's in, you know, advanced stages of aging, and so, yeah, a lot of things have broken down to a really um, immobile level. So if I would have went up there expecting to see her like she was uh, even three or four years ago, it would have been a very sad meeting. But I went expecting something worse, and it really turned out to be, even though the situation was what it was, it was a very happy meeting. But, you know, you can see as you transform that uh, or uh, transfer that into the principle of, of with relationships, any relationship, if you're expecting something and you get less, if what you expect is not in sync with reality of things, what's going to happen? What's going to happen in that situation? You know, this goes, this expectation goes beyond just relationships. It, it affects your very... Christian walk, your spiritual walk. The Apostle Peter knew this. He knew the power of expectation. And so he wrote to those first Christians who were really going through the mill. He wrote this, uh, 1 Peter 4.12. Dear friends, don't be bewildered or surprised when you go through the fiery trials ahead. For this is no strange, unusual thing that is going to happen to you. Instead... Be really glad because these trials will make you partners with Christ in His suffering. And afterward, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing His glory in the coming day when it is displayed. Now, what's he saying to the Christians? He's saying, okay, I'm telling you right now, don't expect easy street. Things are going to get kind of rough, so, so don't be surprised. Don't be disappointed. Don't be discouraged and your expectations. Expect what's really going to happen. And he explains why. If you go through the sufferings, expect to suffer. Christ suffered, you will suffer. And Christ was raised to glory, you'll be raised to glory. Expect these things, and you'll be in sync with reality. And in being in sync with reality, you'll know joy. And you will know uh, a gladness. And I might add to this with the other principles through Scripture, not just at the end of the trials, but you can actually know the joy and the gladness through the trials, in the midst of the trials. And he wanted them to know that. Transfer again to this idea of talking relationships and marriage. Uh, when you got married, or when you do get married, whatever the case may be, what did you expect when you got married? I can guarantee you this, whatever it was you expected has has flavored the entire relationship and experience you've had since then. But what happens when we might expect something that is not realistic? Well, like what? Well, well you're a white picket fence type of person. You're really looking at settling down and you're marrying somebody who's the adventurer's part. 
and so things don't turn out the way you expected. Or uh, perhaps you're a person whose uh, material security means a lot to you and to the person you're marrying, it's not such a big thing. And so it doesn't turn out the way you expected. Or, or sickness comes in, and if you didn't imagine that to happen, and you didn't expect it, but there it is. Or uh, some, some other kind of sacrifice you didn't count on. Or you thought when you got into a happy marriage there would never be any fighting. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Oh, well, well, well. Yeah, because it wasn't what you expected. And so you're caught in this situation where there can be some serious pain. We were sharing in, in the first service too, it is, it is, it's funny, I had to mention this story to Kathy in a while, and she just started no, nodding uh, instantly, remembering the story. Another church we went to, there was a fellow there, was a wonderful man in the church, a wonderful guy. But he loved to show everybody a picture of his wife. And the only problem was, they were now in middle age, and this was back when she was a cheerleader in high school. <laughs> And he said, and, but can you see what was happening? He go, this is what she used to look like. See, somewhere there was a break in expectation here. I, I don't know if he expected his wife to look like a high school cheerleader at, you know, when she was 45, but it was not realistic. And, and, and in the expectation that wasn't realistic, there was, there was disappointment on both sides. He was disappointed, and his wife was probably feeling guilty or whatever that she, you know, but there was pain involved in here because there was an expectation that was not realistic. When human expectations are dashed, realistic or not, when they are dashed, it inevitably leads to resentment. There's a lot of people still married, going together, and there's this resentment that has been going on. They may not even want to admit it, but there's a resentment to something or another going on. And then it sends out emotional shock waves that, that come out in all kinds of ways, can send people to dangerous places if they're not careful. It all comes down to this imagination. That's where expectations come from. Imagine when we're married. Imagine when we're 10 years down the road or like that the Beatles song. Remember that one? I'm 64. Remember that song? Okay, you just dated yourself, thank you. <laughs> Along with me. But with imagination, and if the imagination goes to a dark place, it gets to be a dangerous thing. 